Before going through the surgery for his heart, a young boy named Sho is sent to his family's estate by his parents to rest by his aunt. She drives him along with her to the beautiful countryside home. Just as they reach there, the aunt finds another car blocking their path and goes out to clear the path. Sho gets to come out as well and watch the estate for the very first time. It is comprised of a small house amid a sprawling green landscape. During his first moments on the grounds, Sho sees the house cat, Nia, who appears to be waiting for something hidden in the plants but eventually it gives up. After Nia leaves, Sho catches sight of what appears to be a miniature human. However, he doesn't pay much attention to it. After all, a miniature human. Who would want to believe that? The miniature girl, however, very much exists. She is a young girl, named Arietti, the daughter of a family of borrowers that live in a small humble house under the house's floorboards. After ensuring that Sho had left her surrounding, Arietti reveals herself and makes a swift return to her parents. She almost gets caught by Nia again, but manages to escape safe and sound. Arietti had gone out to gather some herbs for her mother homely as it's her birthday and had managed to gather some bay leaves. Just as the mother and daughter discuss what they will be having for dinner today, Arietti's father, Pot, arrives. The man appears to be very hard-headed and straightforward and has a frown on his face at all times. He informs the family about Sho's arrival in the house. Though Homley fears for their safety, Pod reassures the family that Sho has a heart condition, so he probably won't cause them much trouble. Arietti is relieved as her father had intended to take her on her first borrowing within the walls of the house. If this new human was more trouble he wouldn't have taken her, so she feels happy that he was what he was. Burrowing is the skill that has kept their family and dynasty alive for so long, the skill that requires them to basically steal food from the humans. This however is no easy task as everything humans have is massive and needs to be carefully extracted from the kitchen. Too little and they wouldn't be able to survive, too much and the humans would start noticing the missing objects. Later on that evening, Arady prepares herself for the burrowing they need to do and carefully chooses what she is wearing. She then accompanies her father on a quest to obtain a cube of sugar and some tissue paper as per the request of her mother. Through a series of crevices and small openings within the floorboards of the house, the burrowers have made a path to make easy passage to the kitchen and every other room in the house. Although Arietti and her family are the only burrowers that remain in the house now, they still use this path for their usual burrowing. First, Pod leads his daughter to the kitchen. They appear through a crevice in the kitchen cupboard. Pod uses the fishing hook as an anchor to lower himself to the floor and then uses the tape to make his boots sticky and uses that to climb into place where the sugar is kept. Arady follows her father's lead and gets to the floor to gather the sugar cube that he lowered down for her. For the tissues, Arietti and Pod climb to the house's second floor, where they make their way through an intricate dollhouse and into a guest bedroom. The two attempt to get the tissue paper from right next to a bed where Sho is asleep, but Arietti freezes when it seems that Sho has seen her. In her attempt to leave, she drops the sugar cube. As she and Pod leave, Sho addresses her, asking if she is like the little people that his mother told stories about. She doesn't reply and just keeps walking and Sho goes to sleep once more. Arietti is pretty angry at herself for letting her family down as that sugar was really necessary for their family to survive. Realizing that his daughter is blaming herself for the day being fruitless, Pod decides to take all the blame on himself, and when his wife asks why they had returned empty-handed, Pod makes up an excuse that his light gave out. The next day, Arietti is surprised when the boy stops near a grate near their home and leaves a cube of sugar and a small note. Arietti tells her parents about this, and Homley is informed by Pod that knowledge of their presence may mean they will have to leave their home. Arietti ponders what to do and returns to the sugar cube. Upon reading the note, you left something behind, she takes the items and climbing up to the second floor, addresses Sho through his window. Returning the cube, she requests that he leave their family alone. She tells him that if they were ever discovered she and her family would have to leave the premises immediately and she had lived here her entire life, and she definitely wasn't intending to leave. Sho tries to explain that he had no intention of doing anything like that, however, the moment is interrupted when a crow attempts to eat Arietti. It comes crashing and hoping to grab Arietti, but she manages to dodge it just in time and the crow ends up stuck in the wire mesh of the window. Sho saves Arietti from falling and hides her as the housekeeper Haru comes in, managing to get the crow loose. After she leaves, Sho realizes that Arietti has snuck off. Attempting to return home, she encounters Pod. Pod realizes that she had been to see Sho and is terribly disappointed at her for putting not only herself but even her whole family at risk. Later as Pod and Homley are together, Pod tells her that it's time they look for a new place to live. Homley is devastated at this as she absolutely loves her home. 
In the evening, show his dinner with his aunt and Haru. Sho's conversation turns to the dollhouse and his aunt explains that their father told her and Sho's mom that it was made for the little people that he had seen. After dinner, all three go upstairs to appreciate the detailed intricacy of the house. Later on, as Arietti and Homley stitch sacks to carry their belongings, Pod comes home with the help of another borrower named Spiller. Pod has twisted his ankle. The existence of another borrower fills Arietti and Homley with the hope that they aren't the last of their kind, and Spiller agrees to help them find a new place. After he leaves, Pod explains to Arietti that before she was born, there were two other families of borrowers that lived in the house. One of them disappeared and the other moved away. Suddenly, the dwelling is shaken as the ceiling is removed. Though it seems that they have been discovered, it is actually Sho who removes the family's small kitchen and replaces it with the one in the dollhouse upstairs. However, the gesture of kindness does nothing more than increase the family's determination to leave. After recovering from his sprain, Pod leaves to search out Spiller and a new place while Homley continues to pack. Meanwhile, Ariadne finds Sho out in the garden with Nia. Though Sho seems happy to have gifted the kitchen to the borrowers, Ariadne confesses that his knowledge of their existence has caused her family to prepare to move away. Sho asks if he can look at her, to which she doesn't say anything as it makes no difference anymore. He tells her she's beautiful. Then he asks questions about borrowers and says that there must be very few left and soon there will be none. That's fate. To which Arietti gets upset and says it's his fault they have to leave, but they're going to survive, they are not going to die. Sho apologizes and says that she's right, he's the one who's going to die. He tells her about his heart condition and hopes she can forgive him for everything. Arietti is taken aback by this confession and seems deeply affected and saddened to find out about his sickness. Haru finds the borrower's home, with Homley in the dollhouse kitchen and takes her and puts her in a jar, making sure she can breathe in there. Then she calls a pest control company, saying she wants a trapping service for something in the house that she doesn't want to be killed. When Ariadne finds that her mother was taken, she goes to show and he helps rescue her. He also takes the dollhouse kitchen back into the dollhouse in his room, so when Haru tries to prove what she saw, she has nothing. Ariadne's family leaves. They are followed by Nia, the cat, who goes back and brings Sho to say goodbye. He brings a sugar cube as a gift and Ariadne gives him her hair clip, for good luck with his oncoming heart surgery. The borrowers then sail away in a teapot with Spiller. Ariadne looks sad and Spiller awkwardly offers her a fruit. He's very happy when she takes it. A fish swimming in the shallow water catches her interest, seeming huge next to them. The film ends on a serene, yet sad note. So guys, I want to hear your thoughts and your opinions, so go ahead and comment below. And before you go, don't forget to smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed, and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you don't want to miss anything we have coming up. With that, we'll see you next time.